I don't know what that building is. I guess it's a water tanker. So this area is going to be changing here pretty soon. This is where they're going to put a new development in, supposedly with uh, a marina and a hotel. And somewhere there's going to be a bridge over to housing over on that side. And so I wanted to come down here and film this before it changed. This is the parking lot for this boat ramp here. I don't know if this is actual Tuscumbia Landing, but I'm pretty sure that this water coming through here is the water coming from Spring Park. And you go out that way to the Tennessee River. We're out riding around on the helix. We're gonna take a video of this place before it changes. There's people down here, a couple of cars down here kayaking. And there's the mighty helix. I'm gonna... So I guarantee you this place has got a lot of history on it. Right at the top of the hill is TVA Village 1. So I'm not sure about all the history of this area. But I'm sure it's got a pretty interesting past. Past. This is a trail that we're hiking up. Pretty good four-wheel drive trail. Up at the top of the hill is where the pavilion, I think they call this place Park West. I'm going to try to do a little more research and figure it out, add to this video. So today is uh, July, about July the, what is, 11th, 2020, and we're in Tuscumbia, Alabama. I always thought this was Sheffield's Park West, but it may be Tuscumbia Park West. I don't know what that, I think that boat ramp might be called Spring Creek Boat Ramp. This is a good little four-wheel drive trail. I might be able to do it on my Suzuki V-Strom. I can definitely come down it. Some of those roots going up will be a little bit more challenge. As we go up this trail, on the trail we come to these pieces of concrete that I think I probably picnic table and you get to a spot like this I don't know what that post was set in concrete I think these are picnic table platforms 
you can see the where they were bonded to those right there. There's a few of those down through there. Here's another. I bet that was a grill. Grill mounts right there. Because I believe, yes. I believe this one came out of this spot right there, probably. I believe that's a grill mount for that picnic table. Tammy agrees. Great. So here's another picnic table base. So here's this awesome pavilion, and there's another grill mount base. This is an awesome, awesome pavilion. But I don't know what the age of it is, but it's still in really good shape. It looks like somebody has uh, torn off the handrails and built a fire here instead of building it in the fire pit. I mean, in the fireplace. It looks like they just built it right here. You can see the conduit up in the ceiling. And I'll notice the uh, conduit work is pretty plumbing level. Someone's busted up. Somebody stole the copper out of there. Just an awesome pavilion. Still very sturdy. There's Probably hard a hard time seeing, but there's a creek below us. Sit on those, I'm sitting on those utility poles. That are in good shape. So that fireplace is nicely built. I don't think this fireplace was built by the CCC you see this concrete pad right here then it goes on out to that wooden area I don't think this thing was built by the CCC but it's possible but, and then they come back and redone it actually TBA at the top of the hill from the boat ramp up there had a area with one of their the boats. It. It all the way down. Yeah, there's a asphalt trail it goes down to the shelter. You see their shelter roof is in good shape. So this trail leads on up to a 50 or 100 car parking area there's another picnic table so this is a 50 or 100 car parking area and then up here that's just part of that same trail mm -hmm. somebody's made it into a drive and there looks like a bathhouse or a bathroom or something it's got a tile floor yeah. and a couple of uh, Water pipes. Probably was the bathroom. So this place was nice at one time. And you get on down here, about 100 feet from us up here on that left is the where the sign says Tuscumbia Landing. And I got a video of some Indians. There's some remnants of a fence right there. Cedar fence. So I saw a video on YouTube the other night where they were, a group of people were walking back 
to Tuscumbia to Spring Park probably and they said it was a two mile walk and there's one of the elderly gentlemen said that it's time to come back it's time to turn around so this says Tuscumbia Landing Trail of Tears National Historic Trail and above that it says some words that I don't understand then it's got that Tuscumbia Landing and a pretty cool picture there with some wagons on the on the railroad going down and you see it on the left side of that picture is a two-story house I don't know what the significance of that house is but I'm looking forward to researching it a little more and you see that parking lot and the new development or that is the road I don't know what road that is or where that goes to but I'm gonna assume that this new development is gonna change this whole area it's beautiful right now with all these hardwoods there aren't any pine trees so that railroad is somewhere around here and I don't know what this concrete is right there up in the woods there but this area was used obviously the trail tiers in the 1830s you see how flat this area is right here and it drops off right there so that concrete structure that foundation is pretty big so this area was used in the 1830s that I know of because it's trail tier stuff so they uh rounded up Indians and put them on boats and sent them to Oklahoma and this is where they got on the uh, boats when they were brought to Tuscumbia so here is another shelter but I got no idea but it's got the same roof on it as that first one I'm gonna walk over here real quick take a take a quick look Because all this is going to change. You can see how strong that shelter is. A pretty good tree fell on it. and it Don't even look like it's dented the roof. That's pretty good. Pretty good workmanship there. So yeah, this is the same type structure as the bigger one. And you see it had electrical it's not real old those are grounded receptacles so they are been in there since no later than the 70s when they started adding that third wire but it's just weird that there's no no ground wire that's probably using the conduit for the ground. So these these structures can't be too old, but they they sure are well built. And that is a uh, nice tree right there. I don't know what kind that is, but that's some beautiful hardwood. This place right here is relatively flat relatively nice you can't see the creek from here there's some beautiful trees here there's a weird structure right there I don't know what that is it's a concrete base or something I'm not going over there to find out too many weeds we get off in the chiggers so there's looking back toward Tuscumbia and then this is toward the river 
There's that shelter. It's 30 by 30, maybe. That's shady path. 24 by 24, probably. It's a beautiful shady path. There's an embankment over there. Oh, the dirt's raised up a little bit, mounded up. So, like I was saying, this was a. Uh, this goes back to the 1830s for the Trail of Tears. There's Tuscumbia Landing. So, they were landing river boats here. And this was uh, coming up Tuscumbia. This was one of the last landings, probably a deep water landing, that you could get to as you're going up the river until you get to the shoals, the Muscle Shoals, which was the end of the navigation. And here's another concrete foundation or wall I'm not going up there to see if it's a foundation or a wall but, or maybe it's a base for a tank I can see anchor bolts in those so this has got Civil War history I guarantee you from Spring Park. There's all kinds of structures here. Now we're coming to the more trails. This is a nice flat area right here. That's a good four wheel drive trail right there. I can hear the boat down there on the creek. We're running out of battery. So we're gonna stop it right here and save the battery a little bit. So here we are at the Tennessee River, Pickwick Lake at Tennessee River. And you can see, it's a long view up through there. We're gonna go down this trail a little bit and see what's going on here. Look at that spider right there. It's a big one. Where's that? Oh yeah. There it is. He's not mean looking thing. Yeah. Let's get him over, okay? No, just leave him alone. So I'm about out of battery. But I know this place has got a lot of look how high we are up here. There's a lot of Civil War stuff went on here probably. Whew, there's a lizard jumped in front of me. I mean we're uh probably 140 feet above the river it's probably a 140 foot ledge right there at least 100 foot this would have been a Very well protected area during the Civil War to put a few cannons and have a great lookout. You could see the whole, protect this whole river right here, command it. All right, I'm going back up the trail. Walking back up the hill just a few feet. I mean, this is a flat spot. I bet this would be a uh, Nice place for a cannon to sit, or a couple of cannon to, to command this river. And then right here is a orange ribbon that somebody's tied onto this tree. Surveyor or somebody, historian or somebody, to mark this spot, because it's looking right out over the river. So we're still on the bank of the river here, and there's some beautiful 140 foot tall trees looks like or 100 at least 100 big trees and that's where we was at where we went down to the cliff we're going to walk down this side and so i don't know how the railroad or how people got down here 
where they came down at the boat ramp to access the river which I suspect is probably the best place but this right here is dug out like this is this is clearly dug out for some reason somebody's got a fire pit here You see that goes down about 70 feet down to the water. Is that a stump right there or is that, what is that right there? Those two things. That looks like a rock. That's hard to tell. Yeah, that looks like some kind of pipeline or something, maybe. That was a foundation for... Oh, I see that. I was going to go down here and look for this tree. Yeah, there's two of them right there, you know? Yeah, see. Sorry. So there's the one, and you just go down the hill a little bit. There's the other one. So right there is a sunken area. When I get to right here, there's a lot of rubble from brick rubble. Well, this was a wall of some sort. And then come on down, there's more brick rubble. We're dropping down here about 12 feet. And this is all brick rubble. I'm walking on. You see, here's one of the bricks. I don't see no markings on it. But this obviously was dug out area. And this is a uh, Lots more brick, like this was a floor. This area is dug out, so we're gonna keep on going a little bit. I wish I had long pants on. So this rubble is everywhere. So this clearly was a structure. All right, we're going to go on down just a little bit further. Come on. And now we're at a limestone foundation of some sort. This was a limestone wall. Wow, all the bricks is covered. Yeah, the whole building collapsed on here, didn't it? Some kind of building was here. Now we're going down another 10 foot ledge. Another flat spot with some cedar trees. These two cedar trees was like that's the stairwell and the entrance to whatever was right there, a house or something. Here's two old cedar trees. This one's dead and that one's hanging on. And that's the level spot right here. And right down there, there's a cleared off level spot. But I don't know how to get down there without hiking through the thick brush. And what I know is if I go down there, I gotta come back. Let's see if I can go this way. I need a walking stick. I believe those cedar trees right there were planted as an entranceway to something a long time ago.
There's the good trail right there. We missed it a while ago when I said there's a four-wheel drive trail. We're going to go all the way back up, come back around that, I guess, or we hike hard through that poison oak. Oh, shit. I ain't much going through there. All right, we're turning around. Going back up the hill. Right there goes toward Tuscumbia. And this goes toward the bluff and where that house was, that structure. And there's that foundation for something. And then here is a trail that goes all the way down to the water. So we're going to hike this trail. See where it goes. So that's a pretty pretty good grade right here but it's likely right here although it's not flat right through that area is where that railroad went through and then follow this grade right through here because this is flatter so I'm going to suspect this was the rail line right here it had been real easy and that's what they did was mostly bring cotton down to here they probably brought some supplies up this hill but mostly it was to load stuff to get barges down to New Orleans and sell it in New Orleans. So the work, let gravity get their cotton out to here. And their mules can walk this trail, drag those, drag those rail cars back up here or engine. That's a damn spider way up from hell I just walked through. Yeah, I just did that. So there also is a flat spot on the river bank right there. How high above the water are we right here? 40 feet, 45 feet. You can see this has been dug out right there on our right. When you got that walking stick, you're supposed to use it to clear the trail, Grammy. But instead you're letting me clear it. Got him one right before you did. Yeah, I sure did one right here. Get us a stick, clear the trail, man. Break that stick off. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this was the actual rail bed. You can see how. That's the dug out. The then they got a lot, bunch of limestone boulders over here on the left side. Beautiful big old trees, a couple of cedar trees right there. That's a big cedar. I thought I seen. Yeah, there's another one right there on that rock ledge. That's a big old tree. I don't know what town that is, but it's big. And this one is. I got spider webs on me. Oh man. And that's a big one that fell. And there's that wall we were standing on top of a while ago. Yeah, you can see that limestone wall up there. See it right there? Uh -huh. To the left of this big oh, yeah. fallen tree? Oh. Yeah. Somebody got some climbing done up there. I would have thought we could have seen more remnants of a uh, rail bed. But this angle 
Now this hill we're walking down would be just about right. I'm gonna be touching everything. Now we're about 12 feet above Cypress Creek. Now this is where the marina is going to be. They're going to dredge all this area out. And I believe the marina is going to be right in this area. Oops, I actually didn't hit the, hit the zoom button. You can see that's uh, more than 100 yards across there. And then right here is the river. So this is the landing. With some beautiful trees and there's another cedar tree that's where we was at a while ago there's another cedar tree i hear a barge coming down the river well this is a neat neat area right here this looks like good access you can see you can step off right there there's another ledge right there on these multiple ledges. There's a barge coming down the Tennessee River. A tow boat and a single barge. And there's the limestone. Really cool place. This is all going to change here. You can see the channel narrows here. It's about 70 yards across right here. And there's the barge. I think that's Seven Mile Island right straight across. You can see the channel marker over there. And you go on down the Tennessee River. This is the mouth of Spring Creek right here. And then they got a archaeological sign that says, removal of artifacts or destruction of archaeological sites is punishable by civil or criminal sanctions, including fines for and notice archaeological resources are part of our heritage. Removal of artifacts or destruction of sites is punishable by law. Please help protect the past for future generations. So I don't know where the archaeological site is, but I'm sure this place has been used for thousands, literally thousands of years. So another thing about history was historical that happened at this site. I believe this is where Mr. Dixon landed his party and he was like the first white man modern white man the founder of Tuscumbia or one of the first white men to settle in Tuscumbia I think this is where he landed at. It's a beautiful place. That limestone right there. You see that rip wrap right across the way. That's a, probably a real historical spot where TBA has put that rip wrap to keep it from eroding. So there, that, that line right there is where the went down to the Tuscumbia Landing. There's the maintenance shed right there. 
We had three lines or two lines going in there. Three. He's got three garage doors. And here is an awesome turntable. I wonder if you could put one man on that pipe right there. And one man on that one. Right there. And turn this rail car or engine. I don't know how old that turntable is. Then there's the depot. This is going to be a railway company, United States Marine Corps, United States Army, those tanks, Army, and then the US TVA coal car. So that repair station is pretty empty inside. Got a lock on this door. All these luggage cars, real cool. Fire hose. Cool light fixtures. Tickets and some luggage. Some old historical pictures back there. Museum hours, Tuesday through Friday, 9 to 3, mission $2. Yeah, little car. That's a Mason's Lodge, I guess. I guess I had a windshield wiper on this car. Right there. And right there had a windshield wiper. Cool. I 
don't know what these are, but they got conduit on them. There's a name plate. Line link belt. 